Let's take a look at one of the two primary hedging strategies that we need to know for this exam. In particular, we will look at the short stock long call hedging strategy. And a good way to break this down is to look at a scenario with lots of questions attached to that. Each question will relate to things that you could see on the real exam. So let's go ahead and put the question on the board and dive in. All right, there it is. An investor goes short 100 BCD shares when the stock's market price is $120. A few days after the shares are sold short, the investor goes long one BCD 130 call at a premium of $2. And then we have a bunch of questions below. First and foremost, you will not see a question like this that has seven questions below the scenario presented. Usually there are just one or two question points that you need to worry about for any given test question but we're gonna go ahead and pick this thing apart, make sure we understand all the different angles and all the different things we could be asked questions on with this scenario. If you wanna see if you can answer these questions on your own, go ahead and pause the video, and when you hit play, we will look at it together. All right, let's look at these questions. The first one is just what is this strategy? As a category, this is a type of hedging strategy, and there's no specific name that we attach to this that is commonly used in the industry. I would personally call this a short stock with a long call hedging strategy. You can usually identify a hedging strategy when you have shares of stock, paired with a long option. In particular, you should make sure that the long option can be used to protect the investor against the stock's risk. And that certainly is the case here. When an investor is short stock, that means that they borrowed stock, sold that borrowed stock, and have to buy back that borrowed stock at some point in time in the future. The investor is betting that the stock price falls so they can buy back the stock at a lower price, and that would result in what we call a capital gain. Investors always want to buy low and sell high, and we're seeing the same thing here, it's just that the sell comes first. We wanna sell at a high price and then buy back at a lower price at some point in time in the future. Now, with that being said, this helps us get to the second question, which is what is the market sentiment? This is basically asking what we think the investor hopes to happen with their positions in place. With any hedging strategy, the stock is gonna be the most important part of the overall strategy. Now, this investor sold short at 120. Best case scenario, the market price falls all the way down to zero and they're able to buy back that stock for nothing and then give those shares back to their broker dealer. If that were to occur, the investor basically bought stock for nothing and sold it for 120. It's just that the order was reversed. The sale at 120 came first and then they bought back the stock for essentially nothing. At that point, the investor has a $120 capital gain that they can attribute to the stock position and multiply that times 100 shares, that is a $12,000 gain overall. But one thing we need to remember is that we have an option in play too. If the market price were to fall all the way down to zero, we need to ask ourselves what would happen with the long 130 call. Long calls provide the right to buy at the strike price. So this investor has the right to buy BCD stock at $130 per share. Now this should be pretty obvious, but if the investor has to choose between buying back stock for nothing or buying back stock for 130, they're gonna buy back stock for nothing. So because of that, the investor will gladly allow the long call to expire worthless. Yes, they spent a total of $200 on the option premium, but the long call is really acting like insurance here. If the stock price were to rise above 130, especially if it rose significantly above 130, then it would be really valuable to have that long option in place. Worst case scenario, the investor can buy back the stock at 130 as long as they hold that call. You can also confirm all of that by using the term call up. Calls are only exercised if the market price of the underlying stock rises up above the strike price of the option. And that is not what's happening here. So to wrap all that up, this investor is bearish. They want the market price to fall as much as possible. The further it falls, the more money they make. And it just happens to be that they have this insurance on the side, being the long call, that will help them buy back the stock at 130 should the stock price rise above 130. But bottom line, this is strictly a bearish strategy.
The rest of the questions we have below are all math-based questions that are best to approach with a T-chart unless you are really confident with doing this in your head or maybe using another system that you've learned. I'm a big proponent of the T-chart because it keeps your numbers straight. And our T-chart looks like this. We have plus and minus columns in a stock in an option row. Before we even attempt to answer one of the remaining questions, let's go ahead and fill out the T-chart based upon what happened in the question posed above. The investor sold short stock at 120 so we will put 120 on the plus side in the stock row the investor went long the 130 call for a premium of two so we will put a two on the minus side in the option row and that's it for what we were given in the scenario the remaining questions give us scenarios we'll need to think about and we'll put additional stuff into this t chart but right now this is all we need Let's go ahead and dive into the first question, which is maximum gain. Maximum gain is one of a few of these hypothetical type questions you might see with options where you kind of got to think big picture. The stock market can go up, it can go down, it can stay flat. The best way to approach something like this when you have a stock position paired with an option is to first think about the stock. Remember what we said up front, the stock position is our dominant part of this strategy. So let's think about what would be the maximum gain should we just have the stock stock in front of us. A short stock position has its maximum gain when the market price falls all the way down to zero. That gives the investor the opportunity to buy back the stock for nothing and locking in the best possible gain they could obtain with that short stock position. The last thing we need to do is factor in the option. We have to ask ourselves, at a market price of zero, what happens with the long call? And we've already gone through this. At a market price of zero, that call is not going to be exercised. It will expire worthless. And we can confirm that with call up. Calls are only exercised if the market price goes up above the strike price of the option, and that is not the case here. So that option will just simply expire worthless, and the investor will buy back the stock at zero. It is a bit weird plugging in a zero into the T-chart, but that's what we need to do. The investor would buy back the stock for nothing, so we'll put a zero on the minus side in the stock row. And that's all that happened. Sold short stock at 120, bought it back for zero. Yeah, they paid $2 per share for a option premium, although that option was never exercised. Once we put everything together with a 120 on the plus side and a two on the minus side, that leaves us with a net 118 on the plus side. There are 100 shares involved, so we'll need to multiply that number times 100. So the maximum gain here is $118 per share or $11,800 overall. Next, we'll go to maximum loss. We will approach this the same way we did with the maximum gain question. We're gonna focus first on the stock. What would be the worst case scenario for a short stock position that's established at 120? Well, we already know if we want the market to fall to make money, that means that we're gonna lose if the market price starts rising. And there is no ceiling to the market, so the market could go to 150, 200, 500, 1,000. It could keep going up and there's no ceiling. With a short stock position, an investor has unlimited risk potential, and that unlimited risk potential is unlocked as the market price rises. But good news for us, we have an option on the sideline waiting to help us. The long call will be exercised if the market price rises above 130. And when it's exercised, it allows the investor to buy back the 100 shares of BCD stock at 130. So worst case scenario, the investor buys back the stock at 130. Going back to our T chart in terms of how it started, we still have a 120 on the plus side in the stock row and a two on the minus side on the option row. We know worst case scenario is that the investor will buy back the stock for 130 and let's assume that's the case market price rises they exercise the option buy back at 130 so we will put a 130 on the minus side in the stock row and that is the end of this story the investor sold short at 120 they bought back the stock at 130 plus they paid for a premium of two for the option that leaves us with a 120 on the plus side and a 132 on the minus side. That is a net $12 loss per share maximum loss. If we multiply that times 100 shares, that is a $1,200 overall maximum loss. This scenario should help put the importance of having a hedging strategy when you're afraid of risk with your stock position in place. For a $200 premium overall, the investor reduced their maximum loss on the stock position from an unlimited 
risk potential to a $1,200 risk potential. And that's why the analogy of saying that a long option acts kind of like insurance for a stock position is totally on point. It's not fun paying your premiums for insurance, but you are certainly glad that you have it if something goes awry. The next question is break even. Let's go ahead and scrub our T-chart and get back to where we started. Break even is reflective of a market price where the investor is no longer making or losing any money. And if we think about what's happening with this scenario, the investor establishes a short stock position at 120 and then buys some insurance with that long call for a premium of $2 per share. So essentially that insurance puts them in the hole right from the very beginning. They are down that $2 per share premium right from the start and they need to make that money back in order to get back to zero. The only way they can make that money back is through the stock position. If the market price were to fall to 118, the investor locks in a $2 per share capital gain. They sold short the stock at 120, bought it back at 118. That $2 capital gain will then offset the $2 premium paid for the long call, bringing the investor to a break-even point. The T-chart is your best friend for a break-even question like this. If you can just establish the T-chart in terms of where we start with the 120 on the plus side and the two on the minus side from the very beginning, then the question is, in the stock row on the side that is blank, we just need to think about what number could possibly go there that would give us a balanced out T-chart. When we have the same number on both sides, then we are at break even. The good news about the exam that you're taking is that it's not a number you need to pull out of thin air. You're going to have four numbers in front of you. All you need to do is plug in each of the four numbers they give you and see which one balances out the T-chart. And there's only one number that'll do that here. When 118 is plugged in, we have a 120 on the plus side, a 120 on the minus side, and we have officially confirmed we are at break even. The last two questions focus on market prices. So we have to assume that the market price goes here and just think through what would happen if that were to be the case. The first question is, what is the gain or loss if the market price falls to 90? $90 is a good market price for this investor given that they sold short initially at 120. If they're able to buy back the stock at 90, that locks in a $30 capital gain on a per share basis. Basis, that's a great gain, especially if that's happening in a short period of time. The only thing we need to worry about is the long call. And we'll ask ourselves, what happens to this long call? Well, calls are only exercised if the market price rises up above the strike price. That's call up. And that is not what's happening here. The market price is well below the strike price of the option, so that call will expire worthless. And if you think about it, it should make sense. The investor doesn't need that insurance to buy back the stock at 130. They can simply buy back the stock at 90 and make a pretty good gain. And if we go back to our T-chart, we will place 90 on the minus side in the stock row, and that is the end of this story. The investor sold short the stock at 120, so we have 120 on the plus side, and then we have a 92 on the minus side. The investor bought back the stock for 90 and originally bought that long call for two. So with a 120 on the plus side and a 92 on the minus side, that leaves us with a net gain of 28. That net gain is on a per share basis. Overall, with 100 shares involved, that would be a $2,800 capital gain. All right, last question. What is the gain or loss if the market price rises to 140? Well, at 140, this is not a good scenario for the investor. They sold short at 120 hoped that the market price would fall, but instead it went up 20 points from their initial short sale transaction price. If it was just a short stock position, that would be a $20 capital loss that they would lock in if they were forced to close the position at 140. But we can't forget about that long 130 call. Call up, the market price is above the strike price of that call, so this call will be exercised. And that should make sense. If an investor has the option to choose between buying stock in the market at 140 or exercising this call and buying back the stock for 130, that should be an obvious, easy choice. The investor will buy back the stock at 130 after exercising the call and close the position. So let's go ahead and plug that into the T-chart. We'll plug a 130 on the minus side in the stock row, and that is the end of this scenario. That gives us a 120 on the plus side and a 132 on the minus side. This is gonna feel really similar to our maximum loss scenario because it basically is our maximum loss. It is a $12 per share maximum loss potential. Overall, it is a $1,200 loss at any price, whether it's 130 or any price above that, the investor locks in their maximum loss of $1,200 at that price. Point. And that brings us to the end. Hopefully this video helps you with hedging strategies in general, specifically short stock long call strategies. 
My best advice to you is know what you're dealing with, be able to identify the strategy that you have, utilize a T-chart if you don't already have a system in place for the math-based questions, take your time and practice, practice, practice. These strategies will become easier the more that you see them. Hi, I'm Brandon. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll love the courses I authored with Achievable. They include tons of real world examples, more videos just like these on dozens of key topics, a built-in study planner, hundreds of chapter review questions, and unlimited practice exams. Our courses are competitively priced and you can try them out for free first to see if our style is the right fit for you. Follow the links below in the description to get started.